Hello, hello. So Upstart released its earnings report and it's down significantly 24% from its yesterday price. And as you'll see here, it's down from its one year high. Almost This is going to be almost 95% right now once the market opens and the, the stock price is going at uh, 14 to 15 bucks. Now, this is an artificial uh, based, artificial uh, intelligence uh, cloud based platform, a lending platform that is. And so it can be deeply affected by how interest rates are moving. And so as they move up, it can have some effect to the company. But the thing is, as it's going down tremendously in value, like the company loses uh, some money, they are not doing as much revenue as expected, and they go down 80%, 90%, it may be a fantastic opportunity for adding for the long run. As long as the company remains solvent, they don't have much debt issues, and they are, uh, generally speaking, remaining profitable or clo very close to profitability. This company is a little bit here and there, so some quarters are profitable, some quarters are not really that profitable. So it is more risky than normal. But the thing is, it's down so much and its valuation is getting pretty nice over here that it's kind of tough to avoid. And it is a company that I would uh, gladly hold in my portfolio for a long for a long term, actually. Now, you will see here that, um, again, the company's uh, financials are looking pretty nice in terms of the uh, growth that the company has. There are some bad things as well. We're going to be talking about this. Again, this is a riskier one. It's one that, uh, you know, you have, you, had, you have to have some nerve holding and uh, it would take some time for it to flourish for sure. Now, we will examine what happened during the earnings report and why the stock price is down that much. Now, you will see here that they reported a Q3 loss and a lagging revenue over here. They reported 20, 24 cents per share loss versus a loss of 7 cents that was expected. So as you can understand, that's significantly worse than expected here. And actually, as you could see here, the company had actually had earnings of 60 cents per share a year ago. So this kind of environment has really, really affected the company, understandably so. And this is why it's down so much. And this is why it could be an interesting opportunity here. Now, as you'll see here, the company actually also reported uh, posted revenues of 157 million over here, which is less than the expected 228.4 million. So there are some, uh, you know, some surprises, some negative surprises here in terms of the company. But again, that's something to be expected uh, during this current market slump, especially for a company that's handling credit. This is something that you always have to take into account. I've talked about it in a video, in a video that I have made in the past about Upstart. It is a company that has a risk because it's operating in the credit card, the, inter the credit industry, pretty much. And so it's handling debt. And you have to be a little bit careful about this one. But the thing is, again, since it has been bust so much and its finances are not looking bad at all, it may be a nice opportunity for the long term. Now, definitely don't go overboard with these kinds of companies, but it may be a well, a well worth place in a portfolio, in an uh, otherwise versatile portfolio. Now, you will see here that the P ratio of the company is sitting at 21, which is relatively expensive, but not, but not that much. And you will see where it was some time ago when the company's stock price was near these levels. And the price to free cash flow is actually at 10, again, dropping quite significantly here. Outstanding shares is a big problem for the company because they have been printing a lot, especially when the stock price was going higher, as you'll see, like in 2021, you can kind of see it here. In 2021, the company has this insane increase here, and this is when they were printing the vast majority of the shares. Kind of understandable because, you know, they can take advantage of this effect, effect actually, in order to make some extra money here. This is what the board uh, does in a lot of companies and it makes a, lot, a ton of sense. This is probably what I would do as a board of the company. But this is why as an investor, you have to be super, super careful with buying companies of that sor sort when they go that high. And this one has reached insane levels, more than $270, actually, this is the one year high. It has been even higher. And so this has been destroyed as it's going down and down and down and could potentially present us with an interesting opportunity. Again, what I mentioned earlier, because it has gone down that much and, you know, because the financials are not looking bad at all as they are right now. Now, you'll see here that the company has um, some uh, revenue growth uh, over here that is pretty nice and it's growing and growing and growing. And the same thing with the net income growth, free cash flow growth, total equity growth. Again, of course, this has to do with outstanding shares. So bear that in mind. Now, they do have some extra liabilities, and this is, uh, can be a little bit of a concerning thing here. The fact that they have about 6.6 .6 years of free cash flow to pay back all the total liabilities, it's not that much. It's not insane. Like if you had something like 20, 30, that would be much, much uh, more um, uh, risky here. And also the debt to equity is also not that high. It's not that low either, but it's not like stupidly, stupidly high as well. And also the price to book is rather low as well over here. 
Now you will see that uh, the tool will tell you that anything below one is preferable, but again, depending on what uh, kind of industry you operate, you don't really have a, a value to always use for every company. It really depends on the industry, depends on what the company is doing. Like for instance, software companies will have high price to book ratios. They don't have many assets, for example, that, are, that have to do with uh, uh, equipment and uh, furniture and things of that sort in some cases. So let's take a look at uh, the company's um, uh, stock evaluation tool pretty much and um, pre decide whether this is an interesting opportunity. Before I do that, let's uh, first take a quick pass at uh, statement, statements here, just to see how the company has been growing their revenue. This is something that I love to see over here every year going higher and higher. And remember, they did uh, worse than expected for the quarter, but it was still like 157 million over here, the revenues for the quarter that is. And so even if we go by that number and uh, let's just say we multiply by four, we are sitting at about 600 million over here. Well, when this is a decline, maybe even 10 to 15 percent of a decline here, it's still amazing how much the, the company has grown. And uh, also remember the stock price, where the stock price was some time ago. And again, the financial metrics. I mean, uh, if you take a look at the cash flow statement, the company has been making like, uh, started from 10 million here and then grew to 50, 26, 10 and 150 over here. And it is a company that is a billion dollar company right now. It's actually even less than now. It's going to be like a $750 million company making 150 in uh, free cash flow last year. This is something that I like to see, definitely like to see. Now, if we go back to our income, st income statement, you will see that the negative income of the company was negative and then started becoming positive. Again, that's something that's nice for a company to see. Now. If you were sitting at 200, 2021 and uh, you bought at um, the $400 mark or the $300 mark, then you massively overpaid for the company because back then it had a, uh, a market value of maybe like five, six billion, something of that sort. And that would be massive, massive overpaying. But right now, this again, the market value of the company, the market cap, is sitting at about a, less than a billion dollars. Again, remember, if we go back to the metrics, you'll see here that it's uh, it's telling you that it's 1.6 actually. It's going down 25%, so it's actually going to be maybe 1.3, something of that sort, not less than a billion. It's a little bit more than a billion still, but significantly less. And it's uh, it seems like um, it may be presenting us with an interesting opportunity. Now, if I go back to our financial statements here, you will see in the balance sheet, the problem that I mentioned earlier, the fact that the company has been um, pretty much uh, creating a low, a ton of shares here, millions of uh, money pretty much retrieved from shareholders uh, via shares that the company uh, printed, issued pretty much. But the thing is, as the company's stock price is down 95%, I have uh, doubts uh, about them printing more shares. Very unlikely that this will happen. Doesn't make a ton of sense. Uh, it, it would be more likely to actually buy back some shares as the stock price goes down than actually issue more at this current price, which is uh, pretty low for what the company is and what the company has been as well. And in terms of the total equity, it has been increasing again, uh, based a lot on that fact and the little money that the company is making. They're not making a ton yet, but they are still, they are still not uh, losing uh, too much as well. Now, the quarter was bad. We examined that, but you will see that the previous years, for instance, it started getting into positive territory. And again, this is a company that can be deeply affected by the current uh, market environment. And it is a riskier one than normal. It's not for the, uh, you know, for the faint of heart, that's for sure. Now, you will see here that they have been also getting some extra debt, uh, financing some over here, something that uh, the, the, any company would do at some point. Now, this is a little bit more than uh, they, would, they would normally take. They took it back in a few years, like 2018, 2017. Then they started, uh, they stopped actually taking that much debt and uh, now they're taking a little bit more. But still, their debt levels are not very high. Remember that they were making 150 billion uh, million in uh, free cash flow. And if you take a look at their balance sheet, they have about, uh, about that is about a billion in terms of total abilities. So it's uh, about 6, 6.6, something of that sort, is um, the correlation between the free cash flow and the total abilities that the company has. So a pretty solvent company for the most part. Now let's take a look at our stock evaluation tool just to decide what kind of price it would make sense to pay for this one. Now based on analyst estimates, the company is expected to have slow growth in the upcoming one or two years and then uh, pretty much shoot upwards. Uh, so they are looking at maybe 4% in the upcoming maybe one or two years and then maybe 30% is what uh, you will see analysts telling you about this one. 
So as you will see, the company has been uh, growing their revenues at a tremendous pace. So for my projections here, I'm going to go uh, pretty lower, much, much lower. So I'm going to go 10, 12 and 14. And I think the company will comfortably achieve that for the five years to come, potentially even more. Now, in terms of the net income margins, um, again, the company has had some quarters that were negative, some quarters that were positive. Uh, lately, they have been reaching profitability. So they have had uh, positive uh, margins. I'm going to go with uh, margins that are not 16%, they are lower. I'm going to go, let's say, 12, uh, 13, and 14 here. And the free cash flow margin that I'm going to use is something that is close to 100, maybe 90, 100, and 110 over here. And uh, annual return of uh, 13%. And so we hit calculate and let's see what we are getting over here. And now you will see that with the current price being at 14 bucks, remember this is 14 bucks right now, our low estimate is sitting at 22, our medium at 29, and our high at, at 38 over here almost, with these kinds of projections, which I think are very, very uh, normal here, uh, if not uh, relatively conservative for, for what the company will probably achieve in the upcoming years, especially the margins here will probably be li um, higher at some point, maybe even the revenue growth. But because uh, we're going to be having a couple of years, uh, potentially, where uh, interest rates are you know, going to be staying high, maybe even a little bit higher than they are uh, now, we're looking at revenue growth that is not going to be that uh, high, it looks like. But still, with these kinds of projections, this is a company that uh, looks like it could be a, a nice uh, you know, buy and hold for the long, for the long run. And as it goes down even, even lower, it becomes even more enticing, I think. But do tell me what you think about Upstart. Tell me what, if you own this one. What do you think about uh, the company? Maybe you are looking in, into potentially adding it to your portfolio or maybe selling it out of your portfolio if you, are, if you have had enough. If you are a back holder of, uh, I don't know, uh, a long time now, uh, when it was like 200 or 300. Uh, but do, do, do leave a comment below and let me know and remember to leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.